Hello, this is Oregon Moto John. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to put a new chain on the Husky FE350S. I've heard that uh, new, the chain that comes stock will wear out the um, sprockets because the chain just apparently isn't a high quality new from the factory. So, um, reading on the forums and things, that seems to be, and at the vice of other riders I ride with, seems to be a thing. So, um, I don't know this for myself because I'm not going to risk wearing out my sprockets when all I need is a upgraded chain. So here's the chain I'm adding. It's a looks like it's a um, 3D by EK motorcycle chain. Um, you know, internally lubricated O-ring chain. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and get this on. The first thing we need to do is find the master link, which is here. You can see the clip's going to knock off that direction. And uh, got the master link where it's accessible, put it in gear so that I can just lightly tap that off. So there's many ways of removing a master link clip. Um, what I did is just put this on the end and gave it a quick tap with a hammer um, after this screwdriver was butted up against it and it popped the clip right off. So now it's just a matter of removing the clip and then removing the master link. The side plate was pretty tight on here, so I had to just take a screwdriver to, um, you know, tap, lightly tap in here to get that side plate off. And then it's just a matter of removing the master link clip. I'm going to save the master link, um, put it in like a pack so that I can along with the bike so that I can, uh, if I do happen to have a chain come apart, I have an extra one, so might as well save it for later. Now, you put your bike in neutral, and then that way it allows you to be able to pull the chain right out. And it'll make it easier to put the new one in. It looks like this is a um, Z-Chain um, X-Ring, and it's a size 520, and this is 120 links, it's black and gold. And um, you can see I've laid the chain out um, side by side here. So I know I can cut it to size so it matches the old one since I'm not changing gearing. And it looks like I'll need to take off um, one, two links. So the chain is going to be broken. I'm going to grind off the end of this pin here and then drive that out. And then when I add the master link, it'll be the same length as the old chain. So now I'm going to grind this link off. Um, it looks like it's going to be this one right here. So that is the winner right there. And I'm just going to grind off this end. So I've got a little bit ground off. It'd probably push out now, but I'm gonna go a little bit further. Uh, make sure you have protective eyewear. Uh, you could also put this in a vise. I'm putting it up against my guard here and grinding so that I don't slip and grind myself. Um, but just make sure you get the right rivet because once you cut this chain, um, obviously there's no going back. There's no putting, um, other than putting the master, an extra link in, which master link in, which I don't wanna do. Once you cut it, you're committed, so. Um, you know, I flattened out this chain, made sure that it was lined up, and this is indeed the rivet I need to take out. Plenty of this rivet is ground off now, so now it's just a matter of using a chain breaking tool to push the rivet out. I'm using an RK ch chain breaking tool. Um, you can see I have the uh, pin here to drive the rivet through, so I'm going to line it up on that. Put this on here and then just uh, lightly screw that down, being sure that I'm staying on the rivet. Okay, I got that all lined up and we'll lightly tighten this down to drive the rivet out, just step by step. Okay, as you, as you can see, I have this lined up so that the pin can drive out this backside of the tool. I also made sure to put the rivets outside the tool here so I'm not bending my chain or creating a distortion in the side plate so um, just make sure you got that 
snug it up and I'm going to tighten it little by little to make sure that I don't come off center I'm not gonna like take this and go fast you just have to go little by little and drive that pin out I might occasionally disassemble this and make sure that everything looks good So you can adjust how long this pin is by adjusting this inside of that. At first I had this too long and I was going to bend this. So I back, I'm backing it in to start with so that, that pin isn't too long. And then we'll realign it back on our rivet here. Glad I ground that off first. It just makes this whole process a little easier. And I, I've always just done that. Oh, that feels better already so that's a good tip make sure that's not too long to where you're trying to push on something okay, you can feel it start to give way you can feel it starting to drive that out a little bit let's reassess you can see the rivet starting to come be driven out but we need to go a little bit further we're just through one side plate but it's good to check now and then to make sure everything's okay so I'm gonna go ahead and Lengthen this out a little bit so it can keep pushing through there. Tighten it a little more. Feel it driving that link out. So just a word of wisdom here, on my other tool I did bend the pin. And I think the big problem was I had this, this pin out right here too far, so I got too much leverage on it when I was trying to start initiating driving that pin out and it bent it. So if you're gonna start this, um, you know, shorten up this, this little nipple here that's driving the pin out at the end, get it, get it short, you know, drive that in up against it, start to drive the pin out and then start pushing. And then as that lengthens through the chain link it's okay but if you start off with it long like I did I was kind of in a hurry then you'll, you'll probably damage the tool so that was that was my fault but you guys can learn from that and uh, hopefully not repeat what I did now it's just a matter of feeding the new chain over the sprockets With the bike in neutral, I can get this over the primary drive and ran through here no problem. Remember when I was younger sometimes I would even have to remove the primary drive to get that out and um, such a mistake. So now, um, yeah, our train is the right, chain is the right length. It's just a matter of uh, getting this put together. This uh, master link is a rivet master link, which is great, those are super strong. So you can see I've lubricated this with the master link that came with it with a little bit of uh, grease. Just squirt it on there and catch all surfaces. And then the next step is I'm just going to um, put this up here. Put it on the back side. Got the O-rings on there. Should show you that. You get the link, you put the O-rings on the back, you lubricate it. Obviously you're gonna put that on the back side. And then I always like using the sprocket to help me line things up. See, it's not bad. You just have to, sometimes it'd be nice to have three hands. There you go. Now that's on. Now we're gonna put on these two, two O-rings, lubricate them, and then um, we'll press the side plate on the, the link using a, my chain tool, the plate. 
press and then it'll be a matter of just spreading out these rivets to the appropriate diameter. I'm switching back to my um, RK chain tool because it has a plate pressing tool here. I can use this plate to, or this little, see how it's indented? That's so this will butt up against the plate and push it in and not try to push the rivets out the back side. So we're going to just snap this into the tool and then press that plate on. Take your time with this step. You don't want to bend this. You can see I'm just kind of setting this up to where it's on the chain. It's pushing on that plate, but you just have to be so careful because you don't want to distort your, um, your plate. So you just take this and I'm just going to barely turn this kind of see if I get it started a little bit and I got everything greased so I'm barely snugging it down now I'm gonna just remove it and make sure that it's okay okay things still look okay so let's go ahead and I'm gonna put it back on and keep pressing that plate onto those rivets so we're gonna snug this up a little bit more okay, I can feels like it's going on I'm just gonna give it a few more turns here I'm gonna still, I'm gonna take another look. Okay, good. You can see these are starting to push through. They're about flush. That's why it's important that we have this to where it's got a place for the rivets to go so it can keep pushing that plate on. Otherwise we'd get here and then it wouldn't go any further if this were completely flat. If this were completely flat, um, it wouldn't go any further because this would hit the, the plates and then it would once it was flush, it wouldn't go any further. So see how that's beveled out? It gives a place for the rivets to go. So I just checked it. It's looking good. I'm gonna crank this down a little bit more. And when this starts to feel like it's gonna bottom out a little bit, I'm gonna stop. And I keep retesting. Take your time with this. This isn't something that takes a lot of force. You just have to kind of keep checking. And so here I am, I'm gonna back this off and just see what it looks like. Okay, that actually looks pretty good. And you can check to, you know, and run this chain um, in a different place and make sure it's not binding, but no, this looks good. The O-rings aren't getting pinched or anything. Um, I don't see anything there that um, looks like a problem. So um, the rivets are popping out. Now it'll just be a matter of spreading these rivets and I'm gonna get a micrometer and measure the width of these side plates to see if how, how close I am real quick. And then uh, that'll give me an idea if I need to push that plate on a little further. You don't wanna go too far because it's hard to back off the plate if you go too far. So just take your time. So I'm just measuring these side plates and I'm getting um, 18.5 here and roughly 18.3 there. So, I mean, that is really, really close. Um, I know this is upside down, so it's saying 81, but it's 18. Um, and I'm gonna leave it. That, I felt that, that plate bottom out when I just barely, and I stopped turning when I started to meet resistance. So I think that's where it's supposed to be. So we're gonna stop. Okay, you can see that the dimple tool is on there the for the rivet dimpler. Um, we're gonna place that on the end of the rivet and I have an anvil on the back so that the rivet can seat up against that and not push be pushed out of the chain link. I have done that years ago. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. This measured 5.27, the rivets did before um, doing this. So we're gonna keep measuring those as we go and just um, get a good flare. So we have the riveting tool on there with the dimpler and the anvil on the back so the rivet has something to push into. And um, sources say to um, add to the, the original rivet size 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 millimeters. We're starting off at about 5.27, which means we want to end up at about 5.77 to 5.97 or roughly 6 at the top end. So uh, it's better to go slow. We don't want to over flare and, or tear the, tear the metal. Um, so we're just going to go nice and slow just maybe an eighth of a turn at a time if that. So we're gonna turn this large bolt here and just give it a little bit of a turn, actually a little more than an eighth of a turn. We're gonna do about a quarter and then we're gonna do just a little more. I can 
Felix Seaton in. Okay, let's stop. Let's check. Okay, you can see we got a little bit of a flare. Let's see what we got. Okay, we're just getting started. 5.34 from our original 5.27, so I definitely need to do some more. Just kind of getting the slack out here. And just go nice and easy. Okay, now it's developing a little tension, so let's put this in. A little more. And let's stop and recheck. Better go do too slow than too fast. And these micrometers are cheap, man. I got this off of Amazon. Okay, I need to get, get with it a little bit more here because I'm not changing things much. About 5.34, so getting a little more familiarity with what's going on with what I'm pushing on here, so let's give it some more. Okay, let's take it off. You can see. Okay, look at that. We definitely made an impact there, so let's see what we got. Point four seven, okay. And I'm trying to get to maybe five point seven seven on the, the the low end of the flare spectrum here. We're gonna repeat this procedure. Okay, we added a little over um, a half a millimeter of flare to the left side. Now we're gonna repeat and do the same thing to the right. Um, don't over tighten because you don't want to rip the end of the of the rivet. I've done that before and it's better to just take it slow. It took me quite a few times putting the tool on and off to get that flare right. Just in summary, this RK chain breaker um, actually did work really well because it has press plates and, and a bunch of little things to rivet, work with rivets. Um, really any problems I had with it was all user error as I talked about in the beginning of this video. Um, and this chain, I've used it on a few other bikes. Um, 3D chain by EK looks great um, holds up well puts less wear on the sprocket so hopefully this will um, be better than the OEM chain and save the initial pair of sprockets the main reason I'm changing this is my buddy has uh, a 501 Husky and he said he didn't change his chain he was running the OEM chain and it wore out um, the chain the sprockets on on his OEM set of sprockets so I was like okay I'm just gonna save I might pay a little bit up front put a good chain on it and um, you know save myself a little work in the long run I guess so we'll we'll see have a great day and thanks for tuning in oh here's my little container I put all my chain tools in and things I just stick them all in there and that way when I'm doing a project I grab the container and um, I'm ready to go so um, not a lot to it um, you know little by little you pick up your tools and, and with a little bit of organization it makes working on a bike um, fun okay with a little patience I got this rivet on here you can see they both look fairly symmetrical and most importantly we didn't tear um, any of the edges um, truth be told I had uh, the previous master link fractured when I was spreading the other rivet and I barely was tightening down. I think what happened is I got some grease in here on the other master link and the hydraulic pressure when I was driving it in fractured the edge up because I barely tightened it down so I learned something um, and debated if I should share it but I thought I probably should. Um, but anyway, the next one I made sure to keep grease out of there and then I went really slow and um, we got these slurred out about uh, 0.5 millimeters which feels good and there's no binding in the link. I can roll this around here and um, just kind of check it uh, there's no binding or anything it feels like the other ones the side plates measured out the same so um, there's nothing wrong with using a clip i was almost ready to just get a and throw a clip style on that i had for a 520 chain but um, i luckily had an extra rivet on hand 
for this chain rivet master link so um, there it is um, in another video i'll show how to tighten the chain so next i'll clean this chain up with a little bit of wd-40 just spraying um putting my rag behind this and spraying it with some wd-40 cleaning it and then i'll follow up with a light lubricant of some kind um there's some teflon ones out there dupont teflon there's um you know i've been using the motorex ktm off-road chain lube which is pretty light um so i'll clean this off with some wd-40 by spraying it on the front and um on, on the top of this chain with the rag behind so it doesn't get on things wiping it off like i have in another video and then i'll lube it and then we'll um we'll get it adjusted it, it feels like i'm pretty close right now but we'll we'll do an official adjustment but there it is um really nice chain the ck 3d chain it looks nice looks good with the rest of the bike the kind of the gold and brown kind of blends in with the gold and brown of the rest of the bike and um, i look at chains kind of like motorcycle jewelry um, they should be functional but um should be tough and wear wear well too so like i've told my wife i don't really wear jewelry but i wear it on my bike so i guess we all have our vices that's okay there's worse things than putting a chain on your bike okay thanks for tuning in i made another video on this but here i am cleaning off the the residue when you get a chain it has residue on it that uh yellow greasy stuff it's on the outside of the chain that's to prevent it from rusting while it's you know in storage it doesn't do anything to lubricate your chain it's just going to fling off and collect dirt and make a grinding paste that's just nasty so um you want to take that stuff off and uh, wd-40 works pretty good there's other solvents and chain cleaners out there as well um and so i'm just going to put my rag behind here spray with a little wd-40 give it a few rotations and clean that off so you, you put the rag behind there so you're not making a mess of your chain and, you, and your bike you spray it on there um, and then you just kind of wipe it off and get the rollers, get the back side of the chain, get the front side of the chain. And um, I've got most of that off that quick. And then you rotate the rag and do it again. Um, then we go to the new section of chain. You can see this compared to, here's the part I just cleaned. Here's the part that still has that yucky residue. So I'll take that and I'll just do the same thing. Move my rag behind it and then wipe it off. And again, I'm using my fingers in here to get the rollers on both sides and then the side plates and um yeah it just takes a moment it'll just take me a little bit to work my way around that and then um you can run it clean or since this is an internally lubricated o-chain or o-ring chain or uh you know you can um follow up with a lube that's never a bad idea to follow up with something but um not having a grinding paste on your bike is more important than i think anything else so now you can see how nice and clean the chain is um didn't really work that hard on it um, so just a quick little tip. Another tip if you want to go full OCD on a chain, which I don't always do, but sometimes do, is you can take your rag, after you're done wiping it off, get an edge like this, and you can kind of floss between the front plates uh, if you got some extra grease in there. So it's literally um, taking this and then getting in there. Um, again, you only do this if you got a certain amount of time. Um, I don't always do this, but... It is a way to get in there and um, works pretty well. You're literally getting the edge of this and you can floss in between the end links. But again, not necessary. Just if you want to, it's a cold day, you know, winter's day, it's raining and you want to do some OCD bike maintenance, bike cleaning, um, you, can, you can do that. So again, just a little tip to get in between those end plates. But not necessary because it's not articulating with anything. It's not grinding against anything you're just removing debris that in a sense isn't isn't really doing anything positive or negative